In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at base and ownerships, uh, assigning different ownership and assigning base to different players so that diff different players can interact with other items and only players that has ownerships can use or retrieve items here in our Tycoon series. All right, catch you on the inside. So in our Tycoon game, ownership is completely um, necessary, otherwise all the players will be able to take from each other. As you know, the current code right now is simply to check if the player touches the pickup station, if the player is humanoid and if the player is alive, and then we would reward them with the amount of uh, cash that's been accumulated. Let's look at how the issue would play out if we went ahead and made multiple bases. No need to follow this step, but let's begin by creating a new folder. And this folder, uh, we're gonna go ahead and place all of this current base into it and simply duplicate it. I'll go ahead and now name this folder blue base, and then I'll bring in all the components that are in this tycoon, not the uh, base plate, because that's just the floor. So highlight, shift click, and bring in all of these components here. And then just right click and I'll duplicate. Now when you duplicate it, I just go up here to the move tool and move this one over. And you can see now I have two base. I can do this multiple times until I'm satisfied. I'll rename the other one so they don't both have the same name. Now let's pretend that these are two separate bases and we'll play the game and you see the results at this point. With the game now playing, I run over to this base to collect this um, cash, and you can see I do that with no problem. But this base over here, which in the case shouldn't be ours, uh, let's, go, uh, let's just go ahead and step on it, and you can see that we can also collect that as well. This is the problem that we're going to be fixed in, in this video. So now that we see what the issue is and why it's super necessary to have ownership, let's go ahead and make one. Now I've deleted the other duplicated bases and I've made this one blue because the name of it is blue base which is why I didn't want you to follow that step but going forward um, since we're going to make changes to this base we want it to only be one and then we'll duplicate it afterwards. Going forward go ahead and follow these steps. Start by creating a module script so go ahead and click that and then the name of this module script I'm just going to add the word owner in front of it. Up here we'll also change this variable name which is an array to match the name of the script and then this return value we're going to also change that to match the same name of the script. Next we're going to create a local array here so just an empty array we'll call this one owner module data lowercase o and then let's complete this with a function that will allow us to register or like sign up the player to the certain object that it needs to be owner um, two. That, that's a lot of two. So we'll just call this register owner. What we need this function to do is to take a player name or a player object and a actual object in the game and pair them together. Um, so that this function will then save that as uh, save that as an object inside of the array that we call owner module data hopefully that makes sense um, just basically sign the player up with the player as a variable and the object that he belongs to next we need a function here for us to be able to retrieve using an object hey code if I give you this object can you give me the name or the object of or player data of who this object belongs to so this will be a return function so we simply write return and then we're going to return from the object module data the object that we're asking it to give us and that will give us the player because line five um, the object is the player right so basically signing the player up 
to register it with an object and returning that information simply by sending a request like with an object. All right, that concludes our uh, owner module script. And uh, let's go ahead and go into the blue base next. In here, we're gonna make a simple modification to the giver script. If you've been following this tutorial, uh, you should have this script. Simple modification to the giver script where we're just checking here to see if the player is a humanoid, if the player is alive. We also want to do a simple little check, one more conditional check to see if the player is the owner of this object. In our giver script now, we need it to communicate with the owner module script that we just made. So let's go ahead and make a local reference up here. When you're making reference to the module, there is a simple little requirement that you have to type. And I'll show you right now. Um, let's call this owner mod. That would be the name. And now to link it to that script, we actually have to use the word require. You see what I did there? Requirement, require. Um, obviously, we're going to check inside the workspace because that's where, that's where it is. And we're going to wait for child and then the name of the owner module script. It's important to use wait for child there because in case the script runs first before that object actually exists, we want to wait. Down here, we're gonna do a if to check out the owner mod, and then we're gonna get owner. Remember what this script does, it's in there, I told you this will give us back who the owner is based on the object. So the object here is the is gonna be the trigger, the actual trigger that we're stepping on. We're sending it as the object saying, hey, and this should give us a owner, give us a player. We want to check now if this information that is giving us back, remember this is a return function, if it's giving us back, if it's the same as the underscore player that is touching it, then and only then we will execute the rest of this code. So I'm just going to shift um, control X to cut them and control C to paste them right back in there, control V actually. All right, so this check now to make sure that we are the owner off the object we're touching and then um, validates it in here uh, if you don't understand this uh, just post something in the comment we'll touch back on it again all right so we'll hit play and now we'll check if we are the owner of the object then it will give us the money we should not receive the money at this point see because we did not assign that this is our object so now we cannot receive the money because the condition is working. Let's check and see, oh, do we belong to this object? And we don't. Let's go ahead and set that part up. By the way, now that we've made the changes to the giver script, we're actually done with this base. You can now go ahead and duplicate it like we did originally when we were testing. And um, feel free to maybe change their colors and make them look different. So just duplicate this and then you can give it a different name um, you can color them differently I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same and I'll be right back so here we are I have made a yellow base blue base and a red base um, I can't pick this one up uh, neither can I pick up the yellow and neither can I pick up the red so let's go over here I'll show you can't pick up the red and now all we got to do is when the player joins the game assign him ownership of one of these many bases depending on how many bases you have in your game you might code this differently I'm going to show you how to do this manually um, assign players based on when they join also assign randomly if that's what you need hop on down to the server script services go ahead and create a script we're gonna go ahead and rename the script name it whatever um, makes sense to you I'm gonna call mine um, I guess register owner or uh, setup setup owner let's go ahead and first thing we need is just like before we made a reference to the owner module that we made let's go ahead and just copy it from this giver script and paste it over here easy peasy 
let's see here and next we're going to create a local variable that represents the bases all of the bases in our game um, they're all in the work space in a folder each different folder so I'm going to call this player bases and we're going to make this into an array and then all you have to do is add the different array if you don't know what array is basically a list of um, a list of anything and in this case it will be a list of bases in the game first base is located in the workspace under the folder blue base in the giver I want to target this trigger right there so giver dot trigger um, actually the best way to do this is reach to the giver and then wait for a child just to make sure it does exist it's always important to do this wait in case something runs faster than the other now you want to separate your items by a comma so I put a comma right there which means I have a, a, a another item coming put a comma there and then for the last one no comma now I've simply duplicated all of this so I'm gonna go ahead and just change it where it says blue to the other folder which is red and then to the last folder which is the yellow base it's important to understand what we're doing. If we head back into the giver script here, we see that we're checking the trigger. We're checking the trigger object in all of the bases to see if they are registered to the player, which is why I'm linking straight up to the trigger. When we say register player, um, the command here to register player means we're gonna send the player name plus the object, which will be the trigger, and then um, set that as the player so each player will be registered to their own trigger let's go ahead and do the registration right here when the player joins so we got to say game dot player added and we we'll connect the function to this so each time a player joins the game we're simply just gonna list the player that will give us the name of the player that joins or actually not the name but the player as a variable and we're gonna go ahead and say local base equal no we're gonna start off at no and then uh, pay close attention here to this for loop and see if you can see what I'm doing wrong before I show you we're gonna loop through all of the bases that we have listed here in this array and then assign one to the player at least that is the plan so pay close attention to see if you can see what is wrong with my command loop through all bases and then check to see if each one that we're looping through we're gonna go ahead and get owner All right just checking to see if that owner is um, new which means it's empty it's free for taken and then if it is then we're just going to go ahead and assign ourselves that um, that area as the players area so what I did here is just simply say base equal that part and then after I'm done looping I'll just go ahead and say if base basically exists if, if the first code at the top executed, uh, executed properly I'm just going to go ahead and print a little register player to an object or to a base and then um, I don't know maybe I just print the base name or something the base name and then finally the command to register the player remember it is our owner mod dot and then just register your owner what do we need for it to work remember you need two things you need the player which we're getting here whoever just joined and then comma the object we want to register it to which in this case would be that base that we just um, looped through and got that base is free okay but now that is it that code is all set what's wrong with the code if you can tell sweet if not I'll explain to you in just a second let's go ahead and play we see what happens now we play the game um, you can see it says register base uh, register player base or trigger we can have hop down here and this blue will not give us anything we didn't register to it this red will not give us anything either because again we looped through all of them the blue was available but so was the red and then finally the last one we looped through was 
uh, yellow, which also was available. So at the end of the code, we assigned it to that one. That's what we did wrong. We're always going to be starting with the last base that is available, and that will automatically be assigned to us. If this is something you want, then perfect. You'll be all set with this code. Let's look at some different ways that you can do this. Maybe putting a stop each time you find an available base. So we won't be starting from the start, but simply uh, we won't be starting assigning bases from the bottom, but we'll start in this case from the top. So to reverse the order of how we're doing this, see we're just looping through each base that is available. We're gonna go ahead and just assign it to the player. What we could do is just simply stop it by doing a quick little break here, which means now you always will be assigned ownership of the first base that's available in the list rather than ownership from the last base that's in the list. Both ways work. One just goes from the front and the other goes from the back of the list. This one goes from the front. So now if I play blue should always be our base because it was available. It always will be available. And if we run over here to red, we cannot take from red or yellow. Perfect. Let's look at how you can do this randomly. To do this randomly, we don't need all this code. We have a variable here. This is an array that has all the list of base. So we can get rid of all this like looping through stuff. All we really need is this code here that says register the owner and what base. And all we gotta do is make that base random. So let's go ahead and actually copy this code and get rid of the rest and then I'll just paste it back. Now again, all, like I said, just the base needs to be random. So let's create a random number. Um, I'll call this index, actually, we'll call this random num. And to generate a random number, just say math.random. Um, we're gonna be generating from one to the length of the base. So however many base you have in your array. So to do that, just put the hashtag or number um, pound sign, and then the base, the array name, which is player base. I have three bases in my player base. Anyways, just go ahead now and change your base to player base using the square brackets, and then just have to put your random number here. If you guys know about working with array, all you need is the index number of the element in the array. So let's go ahead and just print a sign in random number or random base to uh, player or random base. Now hit play. We should have the ability now to have a random base. We got the blue in this try. And just to prove that it works, we'll go over here and try red. And we shouldn't be able to use red. Perfect. Let's go ahead and hit stop and then we'll hit play again just to confirm that it is random. So let's see, we shouldn't get blue again or maybe we'll just be bad luck. Oh, we didn't get blue this time, perfect. And if we run over here, are we red? Yep, we are red. And that's it guys. We now have, you now have the knowledge to make a couple different ways. But now you have the ability to make your ownership for your tycoon game. Hey, just want to thank you guys for watching. I know it was a little lengthy, but it's kind of hard to compact everything and make sure you guys understand everything that's going on. So again, um, I try to, you know, keep it in a beginner friendly zone, which requires a lot of explanation. Thanks again for sticking around and hopefully you got something from this video. Don't forget that like button and that subscribe does show your appreciation. So have a good day.